Did you know that this Finnish mythology inspired Lord of the Rings? Tolkien was not only the author who wrote the fantasy novels we all know and love as books or as movies, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, but an English professor and a linguist as well. He was interested in languages and especially ancient languages from a young age and he even made up his own languages. He was also fascinated with pagan mythologies and adventure stories. And one of his favorite mythologies was the Finnish epic Kalevala. Kalevala is a collection of Finnish folk poetry gathered by Elias Lernroot and turned into an adventure tale. Tolkien read it in the original language and even ended up making an Elvish language based on Finnish. He also used bits and pieces of the stories in Kalevala and made his own versions of them. There are parts of Tolkien's less-known books like Silmarillion that mirror events from Kalevala. Tolkien himself even considered Kalevala as the starting point of all his fantasy novels. The first story he wrote was a version of Kullervo's story in Kalevala. So even though The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings might not directly resemble Kalevala, there are similarities in the world building, some of the characters, the importance of song and words, and animals as active operators. By the way, this is such a satisfying part of the painting. I tried this contact paper and matte medium masking technique in a recent video, and it worked so well I used it here for the moon in the background. And this is what it looks like when I peel it off after painting the background. Almost perfectly round. Now, Tolkien doesn't have a lot of female characters, and the female characters in Kalevala, especially young women, including the one I'm painting here, often have very tragic fates, compared to the male characters, and some of them don't even have a first name. Again, this one included. She's the older daughter of Lohi's two, or maybe three daughters. She's just called Maiden of the North or Daughter of the North. I was contemplating whether I should paint the mother or the daughter, but I went with the daughter for my first Kalevala painting. There's a lot more material in Kalevala about Lohi herself, though. The Daughter of the North enters the story sitting in the sky, maybe on a rainbow or the peak of a mountain, when the main character Vainamoinen sees her. He and other suitors want to marry the Maiden of North, and Lohi gives them obstacles to even enter Pohjola, this mythical location, and then tasks to defeat different monsters. She first promises her daughter to the man who'll make her a machine called Sampo, a magical artifact that grinds wealth for its owner. Out of the three suitors, Ilmarinen manages to make the Sampo machine, but despite the promise from Lohi, her daughter knows her own worth and is not interested in marrying him. Yet anyway. Later on though, when she realizes she has to pick one of them, she changes her mind and as her mother sets the suitors more impossible tasks, such as catching the huge predator Northern Pike without a fishing rod or a net, the daughter of North decides to help Ilmarinen pass them, giving him clues. Another suitor gets the task of shooting the swan of the underworld river with a bow and arrow. In the children's book version, a dragon comes up from the underworld river and ends this shooter. Well, until his mother comes and literally puts him back together. Not sure if there's a dragon in the actual Kalevala, it's not always clear what kind of creatures some of these monsters are, but I wanted to include one anyway. There's not much to go on in terms of how she looks. She's apparently known for her beauty, she's so light and fair that her complexion shows through her clothes, and through her complexion shows her flesh, <laughs> and through her flesh shows her bones, and through her bones shows her bone marrow, and through her bone marrow shows her magic power. I mean, her mother is a powerful shaman after all.
They finally get married, but apparently she's not very happy with her new life, and she, perhaps jokingly, having lived her life as a maybe slightly ignorant, spoiled rich girl, bakes a rock into the slave's bread. When the slave, Kullervo, goes out working and tries to cut the bread with his heirloom knife, the rock breaks or dulls the knife, and he's so upset by his father's knife breaking that he decides to call the whole animal kingdom of the forest to maul the woman to death. She tries to plead with him, but he won't budge. And that's her tragic end. So she got killed because she made a man's knife go dull? Kind of sounds like an unproportioned revenge, to say the least. And this is just one of the examples of the dark endings that the women in Kalevala have. In this case, though, the slave didn't survive much longer either. He eventually falls in love with his long-lost sister and then ends his own life when he finds out who she is. And this is a story Tolkien made his own version of. I had some hiccups with this painting, including apparently painting red hair with acrylics for the first time because I had to search up which colors to mix. And it was cadmium red, burnt sienna, burnt amber and white, by the way. But the biggest train wreck was the fire coming out of the dragon's mouth, so I watched a couple of tutorials and tried to fix it. But how about going a bit forward in time in this video, where I paint a Finnish urban legend and tell you some ghost stories. See you there!